I would like to welcome each of you to today's featured Broker Hunter Career Webinar, Fidelity Career Opportunities. I'm David Testerman, co-founder and managing partner of BrokerHunter.com, and I'm going to be your moderator for today's presentation. We have a great lineup of speakers today from Fidelity Investments, and they will be telling you all about Fidelity and the exciting opportunities available for investment professionals within their organization. Before I get started, though, and introduce our first speaker, let's take a moment to ensure that everybody is ready and familiar with the webinar control panel. We will be hosting a Q&A session at the end of the formal presentation today, so please make sure to ask any questions you have along the way via the question pane on your webinar control panel. We will try to get to as many of these as time permits at the end of the presentation, but if for some reason we uh, we don't get to your question, a Fidelity recruitment professional will be in touch with you to answer those questions uh, in a timely fashion. So with the basic housekeeping items now taken care of, I would like to tell you a little bit about our first speaker today, uh, Mr. David Coyne with Fidelity Investments. David is a 23-year veteran of Fidelity and has held a variety of leadership, sales, and strategy roles within the company's retail business. David is currently the Executive Vice President of the National Branch Network uh, within the Workplace and Institutional Services, which is a division of Fidelity Investments. In this role, David is responsible for the business growth and the operational consistency of Fidelity's extensive nationwide branch network, which consists of eight different markets in 184 investor centers. So with that introduction, it's my pleasure to now introduce uh, Mr. David Coyne. David, the floor is now yours. Hey, uh, hey thanks, David. And uh, again, welcome to everybody on the call. Excited to talk to everybody. We have a great lineup uh, for you today that will include comments from Steve Gresham, who's uh, our executive vice president who runs the private client group, Christian Kimball, who's a wealth uh, planning advisor who works in our private wealth management group, and then Nicole Duvall, who's one of our senior account executives in one of the branch offices. And uh, you can read the numbers on the slides uh, and quickly understand that Fidelity is very large in the financial services industry, $4.7 trillion in assets under administration, you know, $1.9 trillion in assets under management, and in first place in most of our key businesses. And we intend to go through those numbers and share how that scale helps us win in the marketplace. But before we dive into that component, I wanted to share just some personal observations on what I think makes Fidelity so special. So like David said, by way of background, I started in the back office in the branch organization processing and worked my way up to a financial advisor and sat in a similar chair to most of the people on this call. I did that for about five years and had a lot of success and then went through the management chain, managing a branch office in our Burlington, uh, Massachusetts space, and then down and ran the New York Tri-State. From there, I've held several executive roles to the one that I'm positioned now, which is running the National Branch Network. So I try to put myself in your shoes and say, hey, what would you want to hear about from Fidelity? Three things up front I want to share before I go into the numbers, right? Fidelity, the products and services that we all offer to our clients in financial services are basically the same thing, right? In one form or another, we all offer stocks or bonds, mutual funds or ETFs, managed accounts or insurance products. There's nuances to the product features and benefits, pricing, transparency, but at the end of the day, the difference is the reputation of the firm on your business card and the quality of the individual that delivers the advice to the clients. If, if a client or prospect uh, can get the same products or services from virtually every firm, the best way to separate yourself from the pack is to do it with a firm that has an unwavering commitment to the clients. We're a privately held company, it's really important to understand that, that has made and continues to make tremendous investments in our business and, by extension, tremendous investments in our clients. And these investments have enabled innovation for 60 years to create a meaningfully differentiated customer experience that, in my opinion, creates the best brand in the financial services industry. So the first thing I'd want to say is we have a great brand that can help you grow your business. Second is... Our distinct advantage is that we already have the assets. Again, $4.7 trillion of assets under administration, $1.9 trillion of assets under management. So we need people just like you to help our clients become successful with their investments. When you start a book managed role at Fidelity, we hand you in the neighborhood of 400 clients with on average $300 million under management, and none of it comes from cold calling. We're going to talk a lot about our service model and have some of the representatives outline how it works, but let's be clear. 
If you come to Fidelity Investments, we allow you to do what you do best, which is sit with clients and help them make appropriate investment decisions rather than knocking on doors, making cold calls, or leveraging your personal networks to gather assets. And then finally, before we dive into the more formal presentation of Fidelity, I figured I'd talk compensation. Because like any other financial services institution, we make good money in the financial services industry, and that's no different at Fidelity Investments. So where I'd want to leave you at the start of the presentation is if you want to make a good living by helping customers make appropriate investment decisions with the best brand in the industry, I'd pay close attention over the next 30, 40 minutes. So let me dive into the bottom of this slide and give you some background around our company, and then we'll go into some of the other speakers and kind of how they do business. In general, Fidelity has four key businesses that are outlined on the bottom half of the slide. I don't intend to go into each of them in detail, but wanted to share how it all fits together. Of course, Fidelity runs the global asset management company, which is an enormous player in the money management space. You can see the $1.9 trillion and 400 investment professionals spread across the globe. But this $1.9 trillion represents millions of investors and their hopes and dreams. And therefore, we take this part of our business extremely seriously. It's the cornerstone. Make sure we're making appropriate investment decisions on behalf of our clientele. Today, we're going to talk a lot in depth about the pillar on the left-hand side, personal investing. This is the business that touched the end retail customer. The interactions uh, in this business unit could range from opening a $2,500 account online to helping a customer with a one-time investment consultation for a rollover IRA for, let's call it, $100,000 or $200,000 in our preferred segment, to our premium uh, or private client group where you manage a million dollars or more, typically servicing the branch, all the way up to and including our wealth management arm that Christian's going to talk a lot more detail about, which has a whole range of financial planning services and advice for the super high-end client. And you can see we manage $1.5 trillion and 15 million accounts in that business. Next is our workplace business that handles the defined benefit and defined contribution plans for 25,000 plan sponsors and about 17 million participants. I share this as a big part of our business because it's so critical to the personal investing business. It's an opportunity that allows us to address one of the 10,000 baby boomers that turn 65 each and every day as they retire and they look to their DCDB providers to convert these assets into income. Our company is keenly focused on helping these clients become successful investors in their retirement, which requires really close partnership between the workplace and personal investing business. And then last but not least, we have an institutional business that provides custody and clearing for personal investment business in almost 10,000 other different firms. It provides capital market services for us, and it provides a platform for registered investment advisors which is a great partnership opportunity for PI to allow us to refer to registered investment advisors that offer products and services. So when you look at all these businesses, it's $4.5 trillion under administration working together to provide an absolutely lights out customer experience. So with that as the backdrop, I thought now I'd turn to Steve Gretchen, who runs a private client group. Steve comes with a, an esteemed 30-year career inside and outside of Fidelity to share some of his personal perspective and then some of the uh, insights as to how we do business in the offices. Steve, I'll kick it to you. David, thank you very much, and thank you all for sharing a portion of your day with us. My name is Steve Gresham. I've spent my entire career working with high net worth clients and their advisors, and my passion has always been your success. It's the magic that happens when you engage with a family and help them realize their goals. So when I got a telephone call in the summer of 2008 from Fidelity Investments, I was surprised because I never had the impression of Fidelity, even though I was a client for many years, private client, I never had the impression of Fidelity as being a place that was compatible with my objective, which is helping the very best advisors in the country achieve their objectives. I thought Fidelity was a great big company. I knew it was a private company. I knew it was a successful company. But I didn't know, because I hadn't seen it, I didn't know that you could have the level of participation, one-to-one, face-to-face, that you can get with an associate like Christian Kimball or Nicole that you're going to hear from in a couple of minutes. So the industry's best-kept secret to me as I spent more time was that the personal investing division of Fidelity Investments represents, to me, the very best opportunity for you and your clients to create that magic. So I've made a bet with my own career. 
The very best clients we all know want knowledgeable advisors who can help them tackle the challenges of savings and retirement, as David said. They want great service, great performance, and great value. Try to find that in a company these days with the reputation that David described. They want it all. They want a person. They want a company they can trust. They want all of that together. You are the person. Fidelity is the company. So I've only got two very simple slides here, which hopefully will be familiar to a few of you. I've been dragging this imagery around for a long time, and Fidelity has endorsed it, embraced it, because it's representative of the simplicity that we're trying to achieve with clients. To help people achieve an objective, you've got to make the objective clear. It has to be of interest to them. It has to be relevant, and it has to be attainable. Telling people that they need a mountain of cash in order to be independent is not the best place to start. So here, the overview that we provide to our clients is to simply, elegantly, describe the value proposition of Fidelity Investments and the skills of our client-facing associates, you. So our wealth planning overview was basically created with the top financial advisors and their clients to help guide those complex conversations, make them manageable, make them clear, make them transparent, make them approachable, make the objectives achievable. Because we invest, we plan, we create income solutions, and we grapple with these more thorny transfer and family issues, and our industry is too often overly complex, it's intimidating, you know it, and the clients feel it. We turn off Every day, we turn off the very clients who need us the most. So at Fidelity, we take the opposite approach. Think of the stewardship that we have with over 23 million individual people in our retirement plan division where we are the leader. And what those people are doing, as David said, trying to convert those retirement assets, those savings that give up over the years and turn that into income. So we look for simplicity. What do you want to accomplish today? Where are you in your journey? We can bite it off one bit at a time, make it manageable, and that one step at a time, we'll get to the rest later, but let's keep that big picture in view, and the Wealth Planning Overview does that. There's, of course, an awful lot more behind each one of those pillars. There's a lot implied behind each of the questions. If you go to the second page, you'll see the questions that we ask. Where did we get the questions? We got them from the best advisors in the country, and we ratified them with the best clients that we have and saying, what can we do most to help you? And that's how you build a relationship. It's together, and it's one step at a time. So the financial advice world, as David said, has been built by the baby boom generation, baby boom generation, which is now retiring, but they're dragging along aging parents, and they're dragging along adult children. And to the extent that the baby boom generation is carrying the financial football, they need to be able to pass that back and forth, and that's their current primary concern as they describe it to us. They were savers, they were investors, they were low maintenance, and now they're grappling with retirement, they have income needs, they're increasingly falling victim to diminished capacity, and those aging parents and adult children represent a tug on both sleeves at the same time to those boomers who are trying to run. So their needs have changed. They need more help. And it's interesting to see at Fidelity so many independent investors now saying that they are not able and not willing to be able to carry the ball anymore, and they need help. They need your help. So as a financial professional at Fidelity, you tap into a system of support, a hub-and-spoke system invented by the medical profession but perfectly appropriate to where we operate today as an industry, so if you look at that wealth planning overview, yes, investment strategy is the great beginning point for most people, and so here you should expect to have the industry's most complete array of investments, including ETFs, index funds, individual bonds. Active and passive investing are both, both covered very well here at Fidelity. You also have a national team of fixed income specialists. You can rely on our managed account professionals that support over $200 billion in fee-based managed account offerings, including not just the strategic array, but then also increasingly ETF portfolios. So we've got that spoke support for you across the wealth planning overview, including insurance and annuity products. And if you want to see the difference of fidelity at the product level, 
Look at the pricing of the annuity products, which, if you agree with Barron's Magazine, their view was best pricing in the game. So our wealth planning specialists, another support group, take on the more complex cases, wealth transfer, asset protection, and another best-kept secret, Fidelity Personal Trust Company, is an increasingly popular choice for people. So the closer, for me, is our incredible high net worth service team, which has been driving the Fidelity experience for years. They're the folks that are available by phone and through the web 24 by 7 by 365. We're available when clients need us, and you will hear about that service team from our clients. So make sure you ask. So at Fidelity, you have all the parts. You've got the variety. You've got the value pricing that clients love. People are not going to continue to put up with fees. But they also get you. And if the experience that I've had in working with our clients around the country and the feedback I get from them is that it is the best value proposition in the industry because they get the choice of investment product, they get the value of the pricing, and they get the incredible skill of, and support from the people that they work with directly. But let's talk directly about you. As I said at the top, my passion for many years has been the success of financial advisors, whether it be the best practices studies that I've conducted over the years. I wrote for Registered Rep and on Wall Street for a long time. There's a lot of really good activity that takes place. But the very best financial advisors have a commitment to their professional development. And at Fidelity, our team in the private client group is, com is committed to that development. Based on the camaraderie established at different firms over the years, most principally the consulting group originally driven in the late 80s at EF Hutton, we've built the Practice Management Institute. Because basically the better you are, the better Fidelity is. And the Practice Management Institute drives the professional development of our best client-facing associates in the areas of overall knowledge. You need to be con conversationally proficient in anything that's on the minds of high net worth clients. So whether it's products, whether it's competitors, whether it's activity in the markets, you need to know what's happening. You also need to have a commitment to client engagement skills. The wealth planning overview supports a discussion, but that's got to be something that is made possible by a human being. People do not make investment, big investment decisions without validating that with somebody else. We talk all day long about complex financial solutions based on complex financial needs. They need the validation and the confidence that they get from talking to somebody who knows what to do, and even as though they may be incredibly independent, they want to have that validated by somebody who's looking out for their interests. So we interact with the top thought leaders across our industry to make sure that our client engagement skills are top, focusing on specific segments of the market, aging investors, young investors, women investors. It all rolls up to an appropriate family conversation that we need to be able to have because our clients today are not one-off clients. They are part of a unit. And the more money you have, the more likely it is that you are surrounded by people in your family who are not as successful as you, and they're the ones that need to hear how that central point of contact that you're working with is going to help them. They need to be able to have those solutions nearby. So at Fidelity, with the Practice Management Institute, we want you also to make it a business. Make it a business from the perspective of managing that book that we have largely entrusted to you, that has been largely created around you, to be able to give you the time and the energy to focus on the clients. The ethics of this company are the highest of any firm I've ever been in contact with in my career, and there are no conflicts of interest that we're aware of. The clients know that. That's why they're here. So to be able to take your client engagement skills and your knowledge, turn that into a repeatable process, that then drives the economic opportunity for you, which I hope is the primary reason why you're attending this call. I'm assuming I'm surrounded by capitalists, and this is a really good story. So here you're really limited only by your willingness and your time, because we can help make you even better than you are today. So my close is pretty simple, and I want to have you listen to Nicole and to Christian. Uh, but my close is simple, and it's, it's frankly, it's personal. So I'm enjoying my 35th year in this very uh, great and challenging financial advice industry, I've seen an awful lot of growth. I've seen an awful lot of change. But every year it becomes clearer and clearer to me 
that the difference is made by the people. So with this opportunity today to talk to so many of you, I need to tell you that I'm having the most fun, the best time, and with the best team that I've ever worked with in the business. And you owe it to yourself and, frankly, to your family to take a look at what I said at the top is probably the best-kept secret in the advice business. So consider what I'm saying. Listen to Christian. Listen to Nicole. We've made a bet with our careers. We think if you take a closer look, you'll be glad that you did. So, David Coyne, back to you, sir. Hey, thanks, Steve, uh, for the uh, comments. Uh, there's a saying out there that says uh, complexity is the enemy of execution, right? And if uh, you're going to get your clients to execute a plan to implement a strategy that you've put in front of them, you need to make it simple. And Steve's done just that for Fidelity Investments and for the associates that work in the field for Fidelity Investments. He's helped make the financial planning conversation a simple conversation that's easy for our clients to understand. And I can tell you with 100% confidence that the 5,000 field associates that work in the private client group in some way, shape, or form related to Steve will tell you they're better at his craft because he and the team are actively uh, working on their behalf to provide the right solutions for our clients. So like Steve said, I hope you take a close look at Fidelity Investments as a place for your career. With that as uh, the backdrop, Christian Kimball who's a wealth management advisor out in uh, the uh, West Coast. I'm going to kick it to you to share some of your personal observations on working at Fidelity. Thank you, David. Good afternoon, everyone. Thanks for the opportunity to speak to you today. As was said, I've been working for Fidelity for more than 20 years and have had a number of roles since I started in our phone site years ago. But in the limited time I have today, I wanted to talk to you about two things. Number one, how Fidelity Private Wealth Management, Fidelity's internal registered investment advisor, helps clients create better outcomes for high net worth families. And number two, why I have worked at Fidelity as long as I have and why it is a great place to build a career. Today I represent a part of Fidelity called Private Wealth Management in our San Francisco office. And my job is to work with a small group of high net worth clients that are asking us to provide something they haven't been able to get elsewhere, written financial advice. Many of you are CFPs or in the process of getting your CFP designation and have learned about important aspects of financial planning that go beyond stocks, bonds, and cash. Things like Roth conversions, when to do it and how much, the creation of family and charitable trusts, LLCs and partnerships, insurance coverage and income protection, in addition to portfolio construction. Would it surprise you to know that when an affluent investor dies, the surviving spouse takes out 90% of the assets of their current firm within the first 18 months? After the surviving spouse passes, it's typical that the relationship the firm had with the parents terminates as the beneficiaries take their inherited wealth to the firms that have cultivated relationships with them. I don't have to tell you the U.S. is undergoing a widely anticipated demographic shift and a wealth transfer phenomenon that is unprecedented. Our industry is faced with the challenge now of not just helping to create wealth as we have before, but to see its transition successfully through to the next generation to whom I call the stakeholder, stakeholders or the people and causes that are important to wealthy families. At Private Wealth Management, we provide what we describe as integrated tax, legacy, and investment advice to clients with a minimum of $5 million at Fidelity. Now, I often ask affluent prospects I'm meeting for the first time when it was that the family's CPA, their attorney, and wealth management advisor were all in the same room collaborating on a strategy for the next five or ten years involving multiple generations. I've never heard one yet say that, that they've ever said that they have, that's ever happened. Clients are often left to interpret the advice given themselves to their respective professionals. My goal is to become the family's primary advisor, the one they go to when a liquidity event happens, like retiring or selling a business or selling a home. Put, pulling it all together and helping a family involve each of the stakeholder generations gives me a chance to create relationships that can transcend time even after the passing of parents or grandparents. This service model, Fidelity's highest, is characterized by a separate standard of care. Our advice rendered is considered at a fiduciary level, which gives clients great confidence that their interests are ahead of our own. Now that I've described private wealth management and the important work we do for affluent families, I'd now like to spend a minute talking about the Fidelity employee experience in general. As I said before, I've been an employee here for more than 20 years, and was given the opportunity to be trained and to cultivate a career in a financial services leader straight out of school. Fidelity has trillions of dollars under administration, multiple hundreds of billions under management, world-class mutual funds, state-of-the-art technology, 
but perhaps Fidelity's greatest asset is its reputation. How many of you have worked for a firm where, if you could, you leave their name off your business card? How many of you have had to explain why headlines in the newspaper reflected poorly on an employer you serve, even if the business division was separate from yours? And how many of you have had to try and convert banking clients into investment clients with limited success? Wouldn't you love to work for a company that has so much integrity it attracts clients all over the country and you get an opportunity to stand in the doorway and welcome them in? Our job is to wow them and then earn their business. You've probably encountered prospects or clients with a Fidelity 401k or 403b in your work today. As many of you know, Fidelity is the largest provider of defined contribution plans in the United States. If we did nothing more than simply retain these clients as they separate, we really wouldn't have to bring in a single client from a competitor. As we add investor centers across the country and develop new hubs to serve clients, we're going to need qualified advisors to be the face of Fidelity. As I said, over the course of my career, Fidelity has given me an opportunity to explore aspects of financial services that only a firm of its scale could. Trading, mutual fund wholesaling, advising clients in a branch office for five years, representing our RAP program, portfolio advisory services to offices on the West Coast, and now my current role in private wealth management. Fidelity's steady re reinvention of itself and the role its advisors play in serving our clients is a big part of the opportunity our employees have in developing themselves as professionals, and investments made in them enhance their earning power and their marketability in the industry. So today I've talked about Fidelity Private Wealth Management and the exciting opportunities Fidelity offers financial professionals. As we continue to put our clients' interests first, attract and retain clients across the wealth spectrum and stage of life, and grow as advisors, we have choices in where we do it. I've chosen Fidelity. Thank you. Hey, thanks, uh, Christian. Very much appreciated. And, uh, you know, um, appreciate all the different comments that you made there around how it is to work at Fidelity. 20-year veteran, someone who's worked through the system, not uh, much different than, than I did, uh, only made a career choice to stay in close contact with the customer. So different career paths are there. I thought it was really important to then have someone on the call that has uh, joined us from the outside with a shorter tenure just to share her observations. So, uh, Nicole, I'm going to kick it over to you to kind of share your perspective on Fidelity and the uh, uh, shorter period of time that you've worked here. So let me kick it to you. Thanks, David. I appreciate you giving me the opportunity to share my experience. I also want to thank everyone on the call for taking the time out of your day to learn more about Fidelity. I have a lot to say, so I'm only going to spend a few minutes talking about a few things. Why I came to Fidelity, why I love it here, and why I'm excited about my future. Let's start with why I came to Fidelity. My first IRA was with Fidelity over 20 years ago, and it was my father who told me the best place to invest. When I was a State Farm agent, I knew I needed to open up a simple IRA to help my employees invest. The first name that came to mind was Fidelity. So needless to say, I've been a long-standing customer of Fidelity because of the world-class customer service and their reputation. That's one thing I learned during my 13-year career as a State Farm agent, that a company's reputation and brand is the most important driver in getting customers through the door. It's all about the company's reputation and the client experience. With that being said, after three years of working here, let me give you firsthand why I think Fidelity is a great place to work. Fidelity is a large company, but you never feel alone as an advisor. Fidelity takes a team approach. You don't have to pretend that you're an expert in everything you do. I can assemble a team of experts based on individual needs of clients very quickly. I have world-class service team that's available 24-7 to help clients when I'm not available. I also have a great relationship manager in the branch that helps me with any service or phone calls to clients. The technology and the resources that Fidelity provides me, I feel, are first class in the industry. I have client management tools that help me run my business efficiently, which I need because I have 450 clients. I have planning and guidance tools that help me devise the best strategy for my clients, and I'm able to present it in a very professional way. I have white papers from investment experts that I'm able to send to clients. I feel Fidelity's beliefs are aligned with mine, that advisors should be focused on planning and leave the servicing to our private client group. Many of you may feel an unhealthy level of competition at your firm. I know I did. 
Fidelity's put a lot of work in creating compensation, incentive packages, and reviews for managers that encourages, encourages us to celebrate our colleagues' successes. The phrase you hear at Fidelity is, the competition is across the street, not across the hall. Lastly, I want to talk about why I'm excited about my future at Fidelity. Fidelity follows through. When management pre presents us with multi-year plans for the company, they execute on those promises. And if something isn't working, they're quick to fix it. They simply want us all to succeed. For example, they've added to our product base. They've enhanced our advisor tools. They've added training to improve our skill set. They freed up our time by sending newsletters to clients on a regular basis. Coming to Fidelity is not just a job. You can make it a career. There's so many career paths that are available to me, and I know Fidelity will support me no matter what path I choose. We are a team at Fidelity. Each level has a coach, and each coach wants to make you an all-star. If you only take away a couple of things from what I've said, I want you to remember this. I came to Fidelity because of, because of its reputation and world-class customer service. I love it here because of all the support I get. I have experts in all areas of financial planning, and they're always happy to help. I plan on staying at Fidelity and pursuing a long career because of all the innovations. I personally feel they're light years ahead of other firms. Thanks for your time today, and I look forward to answering any questions. Hey, thanks, Nicole. Very much appreciate uh, all of the um, pieces that you said. And when you when you share kind of the uh, the management uh, making modifications to the offering, it's important to point out that every one of those suggestions came from the field. So I like to use the slogan: "We're building things for the field uh, by the field." Right. So it's really important to kind of make sure we continue to enhance and flow based on what the field tells us the customer needs are. So. Uh, in closing, I don't intend to go through the benefits packages slide that, that's up next. I'm confident that our benefits will hit the mark for any candidate that's on this call. They're well above industry standards, and if you'd like to move forward in the process, meet with one of our staffing professionals, they can go into the compensation and health and other benefits in a, uh, in a very detailed way to make sure you have what you want. But again, very, very competitive in that front, a core belief that the Johnson family and our privately held company has stood behind for many years. But I did want to summarize a few different points. Fidelity has won and continues to win countless awards. We're extremely high on America's best CEO, extremely high on America's happiest places to work, and we recently won, ranked number one on this year's J.D. Power overall investor satisfaction. I believe we continue to win these awards and strengthen our brand because we're a private company that invests in itself for the betterment of our customers. We invest heavily in technology, which helps us stay ahead of the curve. And all of you on the call know that not every firm is doing that. We have high associate tenure because we have great leaders who create environments worthy of our associates' best efforts. These environments have built a culture of excellence and collaboration with the appropriate amount of winning in competition. It's a meritocracy that values hard work and results. We have a great training program, and as discussed at the beginning of the presentation, an interdependent business with many business units that I outlined that can help you have a tremendous career at Fidelity. So there's all kinds of links you can go to to get in contact with our staffing professionals. There's phone numbers you can call and so forth. I'd urge everybody on the call to take action. We'd love to talk to you. We're growing and growing fast and need people who are qualified to help our customers make appropriate investment decisions and become successful investors. So with that, Dave, I'll turn it back to you from a Q&A standpoint, see if folks on the call have any questions, and then we can close down the call. All right. Thanks so much, and, and David, and, and wanted to say what a great presentation by everybody. It's certainly a, an exciting opportunity, and it looks like we have uh, a lot of questions from the audience here. So I'm going to go ahead and jump into uh, – uh, some basic questions, but while we do that, I'm also going to put up the slide here with, with the more information links for everyone out here. But uh, can you, David, touch a little more about maybe some career paths? We have, sounds like, several folks on the call today that are, are licensed, but they may be uh, more junior on the on the sales side or the retail experience and are, and are looking to uh, – 
you know, get into a, an FC role? Sure. Um, let, let me start. So the career path, the typical career path uh, coming in at an entry-level position at Fidelity would be uh, one of two different places. You could enter via one of our regional call centers. We have six regional call centers spread across the country, uh, and uh, we, we would love for anybody that's interested to start there. It's a great training ground that you talk to hundreds of customers and learn our product services in the industry from the bottoms up. It's a great place to get licensed. If you're already licensed and you're looking to move to a customer contact position, uh, customer facing position in the field, not one of those six locations that also has a career path, which I can talk about in a minute, you'd go out to the branch network. The entry level position is a back office processing job or again you get licensed. We'd move you to a role that's called an investments representative role. The investments representative role is designed to meet with customers typically with around $100,000 to $250,000 to make point-in-time investment recommendations to those customers. It's typically not a full range of financial planning, but it would be whatever is necessary to make sure that customer has the right experience. From there, you'd acclimatize into what we call an associate rep, which is in the, or excuse me, an account executive, which is, uh, which is in the industry referred to as a financial advisor. The uh, account executive role is doing full-fledged financial planning everything from investment, tax, retirement, income, and estate planning conversations for those associates, and it's much more of a, a career destination role. You'd acclimatize from there into what we call a senior account executive role, which you heard from Nicole on the call, what they do, and then ultimately up through Christian's role if you elected to stay as an individual contributor. Those roles are also supported, though. We have, region, uh, we have relationship managers and regional relationship managers that support those folks, either with... Uh, reactive service requests or with proactive outbound calling to set appointments. There's also a management career path, which I could talk about back office, office operations managers, assistant branch office managers, and branch office managers. What I'd say is the opportunities in the 184 investor centers across uh, the country are endless, and I didn't even talk about the career path inside of the regional centers. If you start in the regional center, you can take basically the same career path I just spoke of. However, the roles are much more diverse, and that we have a whole variety of different businesses here that have customer contact. I'd say anyone that's been at Fidelity for an extended period of time would tell you, if you do hard work and stay focused, the career opportunities are really endless. That's great. Thank you so much for the, uh, the explanation there. Here's a good question from a candidate that looks like they're maybe coming in from a, from a slightly different channel, perhaps an RIA background, but uh, this candidate's a CFP with a Series 6, 63, and a 65, and they're real interested in opportunities but weren't sure if, if they could pursue opportunities since they didn't have a Series 7. Is this something that, uh, based on their background, is it possible to get after higher, or, or is that something you guys would provide for them? Yeah, well, well, in order in order to um, you know uh, act in a brokerage capacity and, and uh, give investment consultations in a brokerage company, you need to have a Series Seven license. That said, uh, we have a tremendous training program and onboarding program to get folks to pass the, the Series Seven license. There's a variety of different workarounds that we have to make sure that people get licensed and then can uh, talk to customers. So we could hire you into virtually any role I just outlined without a Series Seven, as long as you pass in a short order. If you have your CFP, your 6, your 63, and 65, you're virtually doing everything that we do minus the 7. You'd have to take the test and pass it before we could move you into the role in a formal manner, but we put you into a trainee position in order to make that happen. So it's definitely worth your time and effort to meet with one of the staffing professionals, and they can walk you through what the alternatives are there on getting licensed to be able to do the role at its full capacity. Great, and we had, we had a lot of questions along that same theme that, you know, the folks looking to get into the uh, the business, there are channels that uh, you can go through to uh, talk with the, with the staffing professional and, and explore some options for you if you're, if you're not currently licensed. Um, let's see here. We've got a lot of questions here. Can you um, – oh, one question from a – from an advisor is, uh, does Fidelity do anything with clients that have uh, any alternative investment currently in their portfolio, you know, maybe, you know, non-traded REITs or any other hedge fund type products? I'll kick that one to Steve Gresham. Maybe, Steve, you can weigh in on uh, the investment uh, solutions lineup and potentially, Christian, you can talk in more detail as well. 
Well, so Fidelity is uh, is probably the most is probably the largest custodian of alternative of, of alternative investments in the country across our platforms, uh, because again, you know, we serve the the needs of an awful lot of high net worth people. So typically, those alternative investments are originated elsewhere. Fidelity itself does not create a substantial inventory of alternative investments. We try to partner or to go to the best people in the industry. So we have tapped into Arden Investment Partners, uh, which is a hedge fund of funds, and we have a relationship with Blackstone as well. So most of our clients, uh, in many cases, will have a source for alternative investments in some form, and they custody those with us, as I said, uh, probably more than any other firm in the industry. So, Christian, you want to add anything to that? Yeah, I would just echo those comments, Steve, and that's something that we talk to clients about all the time. I think there's an interest in that, uh, and we do have um, vehicles that, that can satisfy that need, but we also weigh in on suggestions as to how to optimize their use because they're not central to the investment offer. So the, the consultation is as important as the, uh, as the, the uh, execution on that one. Okay, very good. It sounds like that's, that's something you could – you know, even if they held custody somewhere else or were in existing alternative investments, it's something that uh, uh, you would be able to advise them on as well. So, um, let's do here. We have a lot of a lot of a uh, lot of licensed, experienced individuals that are uh, you know asking about what's the process, you know, for somebody that, that is you know already fully licensed. Uh, wh- what role would they uh, typically apply to, David? Yeah, I mean, there's there's a couple different choices there. It it depends kind of on uh on um you know the training you've been through, your track record, your career, and so forth. We'd have to interview to try to understand where you'd be the best fit. A lot of folks would come into our system in the investment representative role, which would allow you to uh, have transaction based conversations with fidelity clients, learn our product lineup, and actually um you know um, move through the career path. But just as many come right into what we refer to as an account executive role where we'd assign you a book of business and you'd be off to the races. So um, either of those roles would typically be the entry point for somebody with, I'll just uh, give you a ballpark, five to seven years of industry experience, fully licensed, looking to help customers with investment recommendations. If it's uh, more junior than that, then you'd go into a role which is an, a financial rep role or an investments rep role on the, on the other end of uh, what I just said, and you'd, you'd be doing uh, either back office processing or relationship management with the customers, learn the business from the ground up, and then acclimatize through. But I would tell you that there are hundreds of our thousands, if not thousands of uh, the thousands that have come through the ranks from the entry-level job straight through. It's a career path that definitely pays off because you learn the business, you learn the systems, you learn the products, you learn our processes, and ultimately then when you meet with the clients, you have a great handle on how Fidelity operates and what our products and services can provide to the clientele. All right, wonderful. Have a this may be a referral to one of your other channels, but have a have a question here, uh, seasoned uh, investment advisor uh, that currently has forty million in assets under management, and they are asking: Is are there any independent channel roles within Fidelity, or are all of the roles within Fidelity employee-based roles? Well, yeah, yeah. The, the roles we're talking about today inside of the branch network are, um, you know, employed roles by Fidelity Investments. That said, uh, at the open of the com- uh, conversation I shared, you know, we, we run, um, you know, the IWS business, uh, which is our institutional wealth services, where we, you know, uh, provide a trading platform for, you know, close to 10,000 registered investment advisors. Uh, it's a great, uh, you know, product I could talk to at length, but probably not the purpose for this call. I'd follow up with a recruiter, and, uh, you know, they can point you in the right direction to uh, to understand how you could use Fidelity's trading platforms, our custody services, and uh, even uh, things like the white papers and the uh, thought leadership Fidelity provides to help your clients, um, you know, with their investments. All right, very good. Yeah, and then we have a, a lot, it looks like a lot of experience uh People as well. Can you can you talk a little bit about your current geographical footprint and, and maybe a little bit about some areas or some regions that you're going to be expanding into over the next few years? 
Yeah, I mean, uh, so, so I'd say our current geographic for, footprint is in 43 states, 180 uh, branches. It's, it's where, 184 branches, it's where you'd expect them to be. It's basically the money centers across the United States of America and then uh, most of the affluent suburbs that surround those money centers and affluent, uh, you know, cities across America. Um, just to give you context, uh, five years ago we were at about 125 branches uh, is the, the range that we're at. Right now we're at 184 branches and we continue to expand our footprint prudently. Uh, I can't share exactly where we're going to expand that footprint. It's proprietary information, but I would tell you um, there's opportunities across the United States of America. We'll, we'll add uh, 350 positions to, the, to, um, to Fidelity Investments branch network this year and uh, continue to grow aggressively, and we need seats and we need new locations in order to place those associates. So I'd say virtually nationwide, if you are looking to meet face-to-face -face with customers, there's an opportunity we should talk about and try to make sure that there's a fit. Okay, very good. That's that's great. Uh, are, are there any any other roles uh, currently for we – have, we have a number of folks here as well uh, – any operational compliance type roles or any other license support roles that uh, there's currently a need for? Absolutely, right. So, so I'm I'm talking branch specific and branch centric, but there's Correct. a full support system that actually supports the branch organization, right? So we have, um, you know, roles that would be out doing field operations for our uh, branch office managers. We have compliance advisors that are in the field helping us uh, make sure that we're on track from a uh, regulatory standpoint. There are training roles that are out there. We have a tremendous group in planning and guidance, which is a coaching role that can help new associates get up to speed. There are roles where you deliver seminars for our clients. There are roles that, uh, you know, th there, there is a career path at Fidelity that's probably too extensive for me to go into here, but one of the staffing professionals can take you through all those different opportunities to make sure the fit's right for you. The purpose of today's call was really to talk about customer-facing um, positions in our branch organization, but that branch organization, which is 4,000 associates ballpark, is supported by all kinds of other roles that you'd expect to make sure that a big company at this scale has what it needs to succeed. Oh, very good. Uh, a couple of, couple of questions for the client-facing roles, particularly the you know, traditional financial advisory roles. Um, can you talk a little bit just in general terms about your compensation structure, uh, David? Uh, you know, most in the industry are, uh, or a lot of people in the industry are coming from a you know, straight commission type background, and I know that Fidelity has a u unique model here. Um, could you maybe talk a little bit more about that? Sure. Um, you know, just uh, again, I'll narrow to the producing type of roles. Uh, we do pay a healthy base salary. I believe it's significantly higher than the industry average at around 40% of the, the compensation. Our comp plan is right online. You can look at it on the Fidelity.com website, and it will outline the compensation plan for you. The way I describe our comp structure is it's broken down into a base salary and a variable comp component. The variable comp component is fairly equally weighted across acquiring assets, developing assets into appropriate investment solutions and retaining assets, as well as a customer loyalty metric. So four components of the compensation plan, um, bringing assets to the firm, which is mainly, per my opening conversation, through the acquisition of additional share of wallet from the clients that we give to you, or through converting leads that um, the Fidelity marketing campaigns generate for you, or through referrals from the customers that uh, are put in front of you, the development of those assets into appropriate products and services, and then the retention of those assets so that they stay for a long period of time. There's definitely a loyalty component that says if you uh, are creating a meaningfully differentiated customer experience and you do that with the majority of your clients, there's uh, accelerators there that will help you uh, earn even more. Right, so it sounds like a, like a, like a great compensation program for folks. Um, can you talk a little bit about a specific investment center and, you know, what, what does that look like? What, what, what are the various roles with, within the investment centers and, and how do they all fit in to serve the customer? Sure. Um, so, uh, Steve, Chris, and Nicole, you can all chime in here um, as I kind of outline this one. Give me a breath. But I'd say um, if I look to uh, a typical Fidelity Ambassador Center has, let's call it 15 to 20 uh, employees in it. Um, uh, you know, it would it would have a couple of uh, associates we call financial representatives, and the financial representatives are typically doing the back office processing. It's opening new accounts, doing journals, wires, 
and uh, money movement, things like that. They are supported by a central phone uh, team that helps um, you know, them uh, move the money and get things done, right? There's then uh, typically a couple of what are called investments representatives. They're typically handling reactive walk-in traffic where customers are asking for simple one-time investment needs or investment consultations. Um, so a couple of them. You then go to the account executive role, and there's probably, let's call it five of those uh, in the role. I've talked about that role quite a bit, but uh, the role there is to sit with customers and help them across investment, retirement, income, and estate planning conversations to make sure that those customers are successful investors. Those account executives are then supported um, by what we refer to as a relationship manager. The relationship manager role is a role that is designed to support reactive service for the account executives as well as um, proactive outbound telemarketing to, to drive appointments for the account executive. It's effectively a sales uh, assistant position. There's then the senior account executive, which is for more tenured folks, typically CFPs. We do have, I believe, 750 CFPs uh, in the 184 branches right now. So the CFP role, uh, a lot of those are AEs. Some are senior account executives. Uh, but mainly the, the senior account executive is a more senior role. They are then supported by a second role, which is the senior relationship manager role. So there's just a career path there that gives you a bump in pay and a little bit of a different uh, look at the compensation plan based on tenure and role and success in the role. Above and beyond those roles, there's then a coaching role that's out in the field. We call it a regional planning consultant that's really designed to make sure you have the skills you need to provide the services to your clients. Is typically one uh, that's split across two branches on that role. And then you go into the man more formal management structure, branch service manager role, which would manage some of those um, entry-level positions and the relationship managers, assistant managers where we need an assistant manager when the headcount gets up over a certain number from a scale perspective. And then, of course, the branch office manager role, which is managing those, let's call it 15 to 20 associates. We do then have a senior branch office manager role that runs certain um, cluster markets. Just to give you an example, in the state of Connecticut, there's five branches. There's one senior branch office manager that those other four managers report through to make sure the clusters run in a consistent way and we attack the customer base from one uh, point of view versus five different points of view. So I think I got all the roles, but uh, anybody else on the call, if I missed anything there, please uh, feel free to chime in. All right, very good. It sounds like it has the uh, the, the investment center roles covered. Uh, are there any other um, groups as well outside of the, uh, the the investment centers? Is there a, a high net worth group, or do those reside within the investment center uh, offices? Yeah, David, this is Christian. I can take that. So, uh, private wealth management is located in. It will be located in ten markets. And they are basically uh, in the investor center. So they do, as, as we mentioned, work with uh, investors and families that have $5 million and up. And so that would be the next role uh, above the senior account executives that handle uh, more complex cases. Okay, wonderful, wonderful. Well, that's very good. It looks like we're, uh, we have a lot of questions coming in and we're, we're about out of time. But what I would like to do um, is uh, ask you, David, or, or any others for some closing thoughts here to – to, to leave everybody with on the call and uh, also the, the best way to uh, be in touch should they wish to pursue this opportunity. Yeah, hey, hey thanks, David. So I guess I'll close out uh, fr from my perspective. I uh, really do appreciate everybody's time on the call today. Hopefully uh, you learned a little bit about uh, what it is Fidelity offers from a, a service model standpoint. Uh, you know, I, I'd end where I started. We have a tremendous brand um, that, that really uh, stands for uh, trust, and it is trusted in our industry. We have a tremendous opportunity due to the asset base that we have and the growth that Fidel has experienced due to our historic success and investment in these customers that provides additional opportunities for Fidelity. And we do pay a great wage to people who are motivated to help customers become successful investors. So with the, uh, the links that are on the page, the phone numbers, you can all figure out how to get in touch with the staffing professionals. We'd love to talk to you. We're in growth mode and need qualified people to help our customers over the next five years. So uh, with that, uh, Dave, thanks very much. Uh, no other comments, I think, from the Fidelity side. We'd like to close down the call. Awesome, very much. And thank you very much, uh, everyone, for, for a great presentation. This is certainly an exciting opportunity. And uh, I'd also like to thank each of our, our audience members in the uh, 
the audience today. Uh, we, we appreciate your time and hope you found this, uh, this hour valuable and informative as well. Um, this webinar has been recorded. Um, there will be a link uh, provided uh, here in the next day or so. Uh, you'll also get a separate email with next steps to have all of these links should you have an interest in pursuing any of the opportunities talked about today. Um, also, there was a lot of questions. Uh, uh, Fidelity Recruitment Professional will be back in touch and try to answer you in a timely fashion as well. Um, you will see a post-meeting survey at the end of this call. We would love it if you would fill that out. That gives both us and Fidelity uh, some great feedback, and it's an opportunity for you to uh, for them to be in touch and have a little more information about you as well. So keep an eye out for the email. Make sure you take the survey. And, and again, we'd like to thank all of you for your time today. This concludes today's webinar, and I hope everyone on the call today has a great rest of the week. Goodbye.